Marriage is a partnership relationship between two parties, the husband and the wife. And this relationship, this partnership, will not be stable and cannot succeed until and unless both partners fulfill the rights due to the other partner. In a previous khutbah, we addressed the rights of the wife on her husband. And today we will address the right of the husband on his wife. Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi said regarding this issue, he said there is nothing after the rights of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam greater than the right of the husband over his wife. It is so great and so crucial to the extent that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam made fulfilling the rights of Allah azza wa jal dependent on it. In the book of Imam Ahmad, in his Musnad, and it was classified as sound by Al-Albani, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدِهِ I swear by the one in whose hand the soul of Muhammad is. Look, the Prophet ﷺ is making an oath. And the Prophet ﷺ does not have to swear. So when he swears, it is to emphasize the importance and greatness of that which follows the oath. He said, no woman will fulfill the rights of her Lord until she fulfills the rights of her husband. The first and foremost right of the husband is to be obeyed by the wife. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu commented on the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, الرِّجَالُ قَوَّامُونَ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ Men are in charge of women. He said, they must obey him, or she must obey him, as per the instructions of Allah. The obedience of the husband is so important to the extent that the Prophet ﷺ Coupled it with the obedience of Allah the Almighty. In the Musnad of Al Imam Ahmad, and it was classified as authentic by Al Albani, the Prophet said, If the woman prays her five prayers, fasts her month, meaning Ramadan, preserves and guards her private parts, all of these are commands from Allah. And obeys her husband. She will be told to enter Jannah from any of the gates of Jannah she wishes. What a great reward for persevering through her marital life or married life obeying her husband through which she fulfills the commandments of Allah Azza wa and the instructions of his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and leads a prosperous, relaxed life with her spouse. Another right of the husband is that she does not allow someone in his house without his permission. The Prophet ﷺ said, Your rights over your wives 
is that they do not allow into your houses someone you dislike. So it is prohibited for the wife to allow entry to anyone into the house without the consent of the husband. Whether that is a verbal permission or she knows that he does, doesn't mind this or that person to enter the house. Even if that person is a kinfolk, she's still not allowed to admit them into the house without the consent of the husband. The wife is not allowed to fast an optional fast without the permission of the husband. And this is in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, a woman is not permitted to fast, meaning an optional fast, without the permission of her husband. Now, this is only when it is an optional fast. When she is making up for Ramadan, for example, or fulfilling a vow when she vowed to fast, these are mandatory types of fast. She does not need, according to the predominant opinion of the scholars, she is not required to seek his permission. She can just fast. But in optional fasts, she must seek his permission. Allowing her husband to fulfill his intimate desires once a woman goes into this wedlock, she is not allowed to refrain from submitting to the husband's will when it comes to this. Otherwise, she is considered as committing one of the kabair, a major grave sin. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He said, if a husband calls his wife to bed, and she refrains, and he goes to sleep angry with her, she will spend that night until morning being cursed by the angels. It is a serious matter. Because this is how he preserves and guards his chastity. This is one of his serious rights. One of the objectives of marriage. Another right of the husband over his wife is to be served in the house according to her ability. Scholars said there's a difference depending on the situation of the woman. A strong woman is expected to do more than a weak woman. They say a woman from the city, is what is expected from her or of her is different than one that comes from the village and so on and so forth. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullah alayhi, said, a woman must serve her husband in what he requires her to do according to her ability. And then the following evidence was, is provided. It is the story, the famous story of Fatima radiallahu anha, which is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. The story is that Fatima radiallahu anha the daughter of the Prophet وسلم, and this is not just any woman. This is the best of women, or one of the best women in the world, as per the statement of the Prophet One day she entered upon the Prophet وسلم, and she complained about the traces of roughness and cracks in her palms as a result of her housework. And she came requesting that the Prophet ﷺ gives her a servant. 
a lady to work for her or with her in the house. The Prophet ﷺ, this is the evidence used by these scholars who obliged the woman to serve her husband. The Prophet ﷺ did not oblige Ali radiallahu anhu to hire a maid to serve in the house. Rather, he taught them something and he said, this will be better for both of you than having a maid serving you in the house. And this is one of the adhkar before we go to bed. He said, before you go to bed, say subhanallah 33 times, alhamdulillah 33 times, and Allahu Akbar 43 times, uh, 34 times rather. This will be better for you than having a maid serving you in the house. The Prophet ﷺ could have very easily said, she is not obliged to work to this extent. You hire a maid for her. Or he ﷺ could have given her a maid. But he did not. And he taught them something different. Which, as the scholar said, shows that the service of the wife to the husband in the house is mandatory upon her, according to her ability. Now, it's not slave driving. The husband should not expect the wife to bend over backwards when serving him, the husband should also be compassionate, caring and loving, and should also be with her in the service of the house. As Aisha radiallahu anha said, when she was asked about the conduct of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the, in the house, and this is something I whisper in the ears of those men. She said he used to be in the service of his household. Some people say it's not manly to help my wife in the house. Also, what do you say of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Yes, it is an obligation upon her, but lend her hand. Follow the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We ask Allah azza wa to enable us to follow into the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and enable us all men and women fulfill the rights doing upon us. أقول ما تسمعون واستغفر الله. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. وبعد. A final word to the wives. حسين بن محصن said that my aunt told me, and this is reported by. And Imam Ahmed in his Musnad and classified as sound by Al Albani. She said, I went to the Prophet ﷺ for some need. And he said, Oh, you, do you have a husband? She said, Yes. He said, How are you with him? Meaning, how do you treat him? She said, I do not spare any effort in serving him as much as I possibly can. He then sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Now you look where you stand from him, meaning how you deal with him. For he is either your Jannah or your Nar, meaning he can either be the cause of you being admitted into Jannah or you being thrown into hell. And we all know that Allah is the only one to be prostrated to. Otherwise, it is major shirk that takes a person out of the fold of Islam. This is a serious a very serious, rather it is the worst sin anyone can commit, right?
Now listen to this. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is also reported by Ahmed, classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, لا يصلح لبشر أن يسجد لبشر is not permissible. It is not permissible for a human being to prostrate to another human being. Now he's laying the foundation. He's given the principal rule. And then he said, had it been permissible for a human being to prostrate to another human being, I would com have commanded the woman to prostrate to her husband as great as his right is upon her. Sisters, this is a really, really serious narration which bring tears to the eyes considering how many sisters disregard the rights of the husband and are negligent of it. Having said this, I address my beloved brothers everywhere, saying and reminding them with which I conclude the khutbah with the saying of the Prophet وسلم, which is reported by Muslim. He said, let not a believing man hate a believing woman, meaning the husband with his wife. He's referring to the husband and wife. If he dislikes a manner of hers or a quality of hers, he surely finds other qualities which he appreciates. In order for married life to continue, it has to be a joint effort. We have to live in understanding, in cooperation. I fulfill my rights and he fulfill his rights. We give excuses to one another if something goes wrong. Otherwise, it's a perpetual battle and war that will end, that will end with divorce and the destruction of the house and the relationship. We ask Allah Azza wa to protect our households from disputes and help us wisely deal with these disputes. اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا اللهم استخدمنا في خدمة دينك اللهم اغفر لوالدينا ولمن لهم حق علينا اللهم ارحمنا فوق التراب وتحت التراب ويوم العرض عند الحساب